class clothes up front. Uh, uh, let us say a word of prayer. Father God, I come to you now, your humble servant, asking you to use me, Lord. Use me as your instrument of instruction. I'm asking you to let my words be your words, so when I, when I speak, your words will flow from my lips. Let your word enter our ears, let your word change our hearts, and let your word renew our minds, and let your word impact our lives. Teach us what you want us to learn. Open our ear gates so we can hear what the Spirit says to the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, the subject today is whatsoever he tells you to do, do. Now, when the Lord gave me this text uh, to preach from, it came eight months after I was preparing a whole different sermon on a whole different text. I know it was the Lord because he gave me three forms of confirmation when he told me to preach from this. First, I turned on Channel 14 TVN and they ran a, a, a TV Jake sermon for this text. Then we got our text from this text. Then our honorable pastor, he preached from this text. So there's three forms of confirmation that the Lord gave me. And when I knew it was the Lord, I wrote another sermon from this text. And I thought it was spectacular. I thought it was great. I thought it was going to just be one of the greatest sermons ever written. Until last Monday, when the Lord told me, he said, go back and read that text again. And when I went back and read that text again, I saw something that I hadn't seen in, in the whole 38 years I've been alive reading this text, going to Bible study and Sunday school. Um, I, when I read verses 1 through 3, it said, well, verses 2, it said, And both Jesus were called, and his disciples to the left. And when they bought wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. I read this and the Lord spoke to me. He asked me the question, and I began to get tears from the mm -hmm. inside of my body. Because the ass asked me a question. He asked me, who is that? See, when God asks you a question, he's trying to get you to realize something. Because God does not need to ask you a question because he needs to know the answer. Because not only does Jesus know the answer, he is the answer. Mm -hmm. So when I look back at the verse, at verses 1 and 2, the only people referenced in the text to that point were Mary, Jesus, and the disciples. And they is a pronoun that is only used when a proper noun has been used in a prior sentence. I got, I got some teachers in here, right? Y'all know y'all know where I'm coming from? We're All not right. going to do it So, all. they We're not gonna do it would be, here. in the context that this is written, they would be Jesus and the disciples. See, I thought that the people got married to tell Jesus that they were out of wine. But the only reason Mary told Jesus that they had ran out of wine is because Jesus and the disciples requested the wine. The whole meaning of this text changed for me when I read this. I suddenly understood what Jesus meant when he said, my time has not yet come. You see, the weddings back then were nothing but a big party. And Mary was invited to this wedding, and from the way the text is phrased, it's almost like they said, bring Jesus along with you when you come. So here I am, Jesus. My mama has dragged me and my friends to this wedding. And now I'm getting ready as a man to start my ministry. I have been preaching, I've been fasting, and I've been praying. I already have disciples, disciples, so I'm teaching them. I'm dealing with being a spirit trapped in the human body, but not just any spirit, the spirit of God. When I spoke, let there be light, there was light. I formed the heavens and the earth with my words. John said it like this, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and nothing was created without the Word. But later on it says the Word became fresh. Jesus said, let, let us make, well the Bible says, it said, let us make man into our image. God breathed the breath of life into dirt and called it man, and now he is one. I, he is what he created. He is limited in power, because he is wrapped in flesh. He, he went from being all places at one time to being at only one place at a time. He went from holding the world in the palm of his hand to just being in the world. And wrapped in flesh, I'm susceptible 
to fleshly desires. I feel thirst. I feel hunger. I see a female as a woman and not as a creation. I see things from the perspective of the creation instead of the creator. I see why Jacob worked 14 years for a, for a woman based on her beauty, her looks, her shape. I understand now. See, you never fully understand anything until you've been in that situation. That's why we shouldn't judge others, especially when you ain't about that life. You don't, you don't live my life. So you can say, if I was you, which you ain't me. Because I'm telling me, I'm one of a kind. God broke the mold when he made me. I'm an original. I'm a classic, and I'm not even old enough to be a classic. When I break down, you gotta take me to the dealership to fix me, because the only one that, when I break, the only one that can put me back together is the one that made me in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we have a godly blink being living a human experience. We have Jesus, a member of the Godhead, the Holy Trinity, second to only to the Father, living life as a man, getting ready to begin the biggest ministry ever. And my mama tells me to come to this wedding. Now, it's supposed to be a big party, so I hate to say it, but because we church folks, but when we go to a party and, and we run out of alcohol, the party's over. You go to a party to have a good time, and alcohol is one of the main ingredients. See, it's a symbol. It's symbolic. Jesus is invited into a situation where the main ingredient into making it a joyous situation is gone. Why? Why will later be a symbol of the blood of Jesus? The thing that releases us from the chains of sin and bondage. The thing that will forgive us for our sins and our transgressions. The things that will cleanse us and wash us white as snow. The grace of God that brings us joy and peace and happiness. That good wine, the blood of Jesus. We have invited God into a situation that has no joy. And Jesus is angry. He says, I can come here for this. I came here to relax and have a good time. But I can't because you can't, you don't even have any wine. He's so mad, he looks at his mother and says, Woman, what am I to do with thee? He, in other words, you know I'm under a lot of pressure right now. I'm trying to make my heavenly father, my earthly father, proud by, by building houses and being a carpenter. I'm trying to make my heavenly father proud by preaching the word. These disciples are always asking me questions, getting on my nerves. You keep telling me to clean my room and put the trash out. I'm stressed out. Have you ever went somewhere to relax and ended up having to do something you really didn't want to do? You come to church to hear the choir sing, but you end up having to sing in the choir. <laughs> you come to church to sit down and have a good time, but you end up having to work on the usher board. Or you, came to, you come to church to hear a guest speaker, and you end up being the, the guest speaker. Am I the only one that has ever went to work to pick up a paycheck, and your boss tells you he needs you to work that day? See, you, you go to visit your mama because you miss her, but you end up cutting the grass or fixing the toilet. This is Jesus' frustration. Hey. This is what he is doing. And I can imagine the host of the wedding. He is out of what Jesus wants. He's out of what God wants. I invited God into a situation, and now he's asking me to give him the glory and the praise and bring him joy, but I'm all alive. All my joy is gone. All I want to do is give you what you're asking for, but I don't got it. Everyone else has used it all up. Is there anyone in here who has ever felt used up? I want to praise your name, Lord, but they used all my praise. I want to shout on Sunday, but they used all my shout. I want to pay my tithes, Lord, but they used all my money. I want to trust in you, but they used all my trust. I want to be faithful to you, but they took all my faith. They used it all, Lord. I'm sorry, but I'm out of line. So Mary turns to the service and says, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. She says, look, if you want to put the life back into your party, you need to do what God tells you to do. I know he seems angry because you can't give him what he wants, what he's asking for. But if you just do what he tells you to do, I know the world and the people in it have taken all your joy and used it up. But if you do what he tells you to do, God will restore you. I know you were faithful to your ex-husband and you trusted him with your heart and he took advantage of him and broke it. And it's hard for you to love that way again, but God says if you just do what he tells you to do. I know your baby mama cheated and she left you. She fired child support on you. Cause with dad be father, probably laying up with one of your friends, and it's hard for you to trust another woman again, but 
if you just do what he tells you to do. You want to, but it's hard. But if you do what he tells you to do, if you if you're out of patience because of your children, you you done looked them, you grinded them, you took their toys, their electronic devices away, but nothing seems to work, and you are out of options. God says our hope is not lost. If you just do what he tells you to do, he will restore your trust. He will replenish your faith. He will renew your strength. He will turn your pain into joy, rekindle the flame in your marriage, recycle the grace to raise your children, and refurbish your self-esteem. Because, because God wants you to be happy. He wants you to have joy so you can bring joy and happiness to his name. But he knows you cannot give him what you don't have. He says, if you take my mother's advice and just do what I tell you to do, I will restore what the rest of the world has used up. Joel 2 and 25 says, I will restore the years that the locust and the palmer worm and the canker worm have eaten up. God says, if you are willing to put in the work, he will restore you. He said, I might have you working with water for a little while. But when you finish with that water, it's going to turn into wine before your very eyes. He says you're going to go through some pain, but that pain is going to turn to joy. That sadness is going to turn to happiness. Worryness is going to turn to peace. See, Psalms 126 and 5 says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. So if you can deal with the water, your water is going to turn to wine. Your tears are going to turn to joy. Nehemiah 18 says, tell tells us that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you do as God tells you to do, you can bring joy to the Lord and in return, he will give you strength. So you can walk the Christian walk of faith and you can bear your cross. You can live your life walking with God the way you want to. Somebody is feeling used up. Your will is run dry. You want to give God the glory. You want to give him the praise. You want to worship the Lord and give him joy. But you just don't have to give. God is going to show you how to get your joy back. And not only that, the grace, the joy, the happiness will be better than it was the first time. But you have to do what God is telling you to do. He tells the servants to get the pots that you use for ceremony and fill them up. So you get into church and get the word into you because your ceremony is empty. So once you fill your ceremony up, you might not be into the service at first, but the more you let the word and you let worship get to you, the more you will get into the worship. You can start off watching TV and the next thought. Watch something on TV before you come to church. Because when you first come to church, it's not gonna, it's you're gonna see it like you like you're out of pocket, like you're not supposed to be there. But if you just tear, if you just wait, God will start to replenish your faith. Was replenish your worship, replenish your praise, your happiness, your joy. All of that will come back to you. And like in, like in the text, when we get down to the end of the text, when they took the wine to the host of the wedding, he drunk and said, this wine is better than the wine you had the first time. When you get your grace back, it's going to be better than it was the first time. So I just want to tell y'all today, when, when you come to God and, and you have a difficulty, you have a problem, all you have to do is whatever God tells you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Woo!